When people tune into a NASCAR race, they usually go into it having a favorite driver, whether it be because they consistently run in the front of the pack, or because they have a big personality, or because fans have a personal reason for liking them. Whatever the case may be, they usually have a strong connection to that driver. You've got guys like Jimmy Johnson, a seven-time Cup champion who won five consecutive championships in a row. You've got guys like Kyle Busch, a man known for his too-bad, so-sad attitude when it comes to his haters. And you've got drivers like Bubba Wallace, who I personally love because we are both biracial and because he's literally making me so proud to be a NASCAR fan and because he's changing the sport for the better. But what about the drivers that fans forget about? The guys that run at the back of the pack in subpar equipment on a shoestring budget and are only out there, it seems, to promote their sponsors and to hit a certain lap quota. Guys like Joey Gase, JJ Ailey, Quinn Hauf, or Brennan Poole. Now, I'm sure they have their fans, but they're pretty forgettable in the scheme of things when you see them getting lapped by the guys at the front of the pack. And no disrespect to them, I blame the charter system. But there's one driver that, despite spending the most of his career in the back of the pack, I remember for one specific reason. His name. Ladies and gentlemen, I am talking about the one and only Travis Quapple. Before we get into this video, I would just like to say that this is my first ever NASCAR video. Now, I've had a YouTube for about four years, but I mainly posted vlogs and skits and stuff on that. I never really talked about NASCAR on there. But I've been watching NASCAR my whole life, and after seeing Darian Gilliam of Black Flag Matter and The Iceberg and Danny B. Talks and Erica Stepp talking about NASCAR, I was like, well, I already like doing YouTube, so maybe I can make a YouTube and talk about NASCAR. So here we are. If you like this content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know what you want to see from this channel. All right, guys. Without further ado, viewers, start your engines! Okay, so who is Travis Quapple? Well, Travis Quapple was born March 1st, 1976 in my mom's home state of Wisconsin. Quapple began racing at the age of 16 in 1992 at Rockford Speedway after spending the majority of his youth working on his father's cars. He would go on to win the American Short Tracker Division Track Championship in 1994 at Rockford. And in 1995, he would move up to super late models at Madison International Speedway and was named Rookie of the Year at the track. He also became the track's late model champion a year later in 1996. And with this win, Quapple became the youngest ever driver to capture the title at the track at the age of just 20 years old. After this success, Quapple moved to the ArtGo series, a Midwestern racing series. In ArtGo, he finished top 10 in points from 1998 to 2000. And in 2001, he got a call up to drive in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series driving for Addington Racing in the number 60 Cat Rental Store sponsored Chevrolet. And in just his 21st start, Quapple won his first ever Truck Series race in the Silverado 350 at Texas Motor Speedway. Overall, his rookie year in the Truck Series was extremely impressive as he snagged 11 top fives, 18 top tens, and was named the 2001 Craftsman Truck Series Rookie of the Year. He would follow up this success in 2002 with 10 top fives, 14 top tens, another win, and a ninth place finish in the standings. And in 2003, he scored 13 top fives, 22 top tens, and another win. But more importantly, he was crowned the 2003 NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series Champion. While he continued racing trucks in the 2004 season, he would be called up to the Nextel Cup Series for a few starts. He drove for Penske in the number 06 Mobile One sponsored Dodge. He had zeros all around, but this was merely practice for him because the end goal was for him to take over the Penske Jasper Racing number 77 in 2005, which he did. Ironically, the driver he replaced was perennial backrunner Brendan Gaughan, most notable for his starts at Talladega and for flipping his car in the fall Talladega race in 2019. So with all of Quapple's Truck Series prowess and success, he was bound to be successful in the Nextel Cup Series, right? Well, not exactly. For Hendrick Motorsports, as Travis Quapple blows up down in turn one. Caution is out, boys. This is going to be big right here. Quapple had been black flagged was trying to limp it to the finish without success. Riggs may have got in the back of He Casey got into Harris. the back of Casey Kane and turned him right there, and here they go. 
But again, I believe some, I believe Casey may have lifted because of what happened in front of him. Travis Quaffle got damaged. Comes to 38. He gets forces everybody up. Like Man. either Truex got in the back of Junior, or maybe someone got to the back of Truex. I think they just had the lift over there, and somebody ran in the back of. Started back in 29. Trouble turn one. Two cars hard in the wall. Quaffle is one. Scott Riggs is the other. Ninth caution of the night. Travis Waffle's car, the 77, but who will reap the benefit of this caution will be Brian Vickers in the 25 car. Lost that lap early in the race. He finally gets back on the lead lap. Towards two. Whoa. Travis Waffle. there. Onto the apron. And one of his owners celebrating his 50th birthday today. Not happy birthday. Looks like he's got engine problems by the black smoke coming out of the pipes. Oh. This is Travis Quaffle, who last time was the lucky dog. Get back on the lead lap, and there's the bright front tire. The all that's left on the car is the wheel. Not so lucky now. Tires on it, guys. Larry, assess the damage. Don't worry about gas right now. Larry. Third caution of the day. 104 laps complete. He has made some contact with the outside wall because the right rear tire is also flat. We can see the scruff marks. To lift that car up to get the jack underneath it. Need everybody's help on that one. A series of engine problems and bad luck caused him to have an abysmal year. In the 2005 season, he scored just two top tens and a 33rd place finish in the standings. He also had an average finish of 26. But hey, not everybody has a good rookie year, so maybe he could regroup and rebound for next year and they shut down the team. That's tough. Luckily, this isn't where Quapple's Nextel Cup career would end, as he would later go on to drive for PPI Motorsports in the number 32 Tide car. So he got a second shot. How did it go for him this time? Even worse. PPI Motorsports was barely alive during the 2006 season. Shoot, they'd been barely alive since the team's inception in 2000, except with Ricky Craven. Running on struggling, aging Chevrolet Monte Carlo equipment, Quapple scored zero wins, zero top fives, zero top tens, zero poles, and had an average finish of 28th. He also finished 36 in the point standings and had four DNQs. Okay, so he's had two bad seasons in a row. But hey, it's not entirely his fault. I mean, the first team literally had such bad equipment that they pulled the plug after just one season. And even though PPI was struggling, maybe they wouldn't pull the plug after this season. I mean, they struck a deal with Toyota to replace the Chevrolets they had, and they shut down the whole team because Ty decided not to renew their sponsorship. <sighs> You're kidding me. This is the second year in a row that Travis Quapple has been left without a ride due to teams not being able to find sponsorship and due to them not having good equipment. Unfortunately, he could not find a cup ride for the 2007 season, so he went back to racing trucks. This time, racing the number 6 k and Filters truck for Roush Fenway Racing. Quapple would finish with 4 wins, 8 top 5s, and 12 top 10s. A well-needed ego booster for Quapple. In fact, this impressed owner Jack Roush so much that he recommended him to his buddy Robert Yates, owner of Robert Yates Racing. So for the third time in four years, Quapple would be returning to the Cup Series, this time in above average equipment with an actually reputable team. And what did he do with this equipment? He got a pole at Talladega, and he got four top 10 finishes. That's definitely an improvement in my book based on the career he's had before. It seemed like things were finally starting to go well for Travis Quapple as he looked towards the 2009 season who knows what that season would have in store for him, and they shut down the team after just six races into the 2009 season. <sighs> this would force Travis Quapple to move to Front Row Motorsports for the remainder of the 2009 season. This is unbelievable. This is the third time Travis Quapple has gotten a ride in the Cup Series just for it to be taken away from him due to the team having a lack of funding and sponsorship. Even though he raced with Front Row until the end of the 2011 season, and then with BK Racing until the end of the 2013 season, and part-time with Go Fast in 2014, he would never see the same performance that he did in the 2008 season. Because from 2010 to 2014, 
Quapple would score zero wins, zero top fives, and just two top tens. And as of 2020, Quapple races part-time in the NASCAR Gander Outdoors Truck Series, driving the number one truck for Beaver Motorsports. But his last race was in 2019 at Martinsville. Also, it should be noted that in 2013, Quapple was arrested by the Mooresville, North Carolina Police Department following a domestic dispute. Quapple was charged with assault on a female and false imprisonment, but after posting bail, was allowed to race in that weekend's Bank of America 500. So, why exactly did he fail? Well, firstly, I wouldn't say that he failed entirely. Man still has a truck series title to his name and a few wins, as well as a boatload of top fives and top tens in the truck series. But when looking at him at a cup series standpoint, yeah, he was a failure. But I'd like to raise the argument and say that it's not entirely his fault. He, like many other drivers, was put in garbage equipment from the get-go. And from his time in the Penske 77 to his time in the BK93, Quapple was left out to dry thanks to a lack of sponsorship and teams deciding to close before Quapple could really develop. However, I also think that it was unwise for Penske to call him up before having a few more races in the Bush series. Yes, he was a proven winner and had much to show for it, but I've seen many a driver jump the gun and lose everything because of it. Look at Dylan Kwasanewski, a talented driver with a promising future, but the development teams for Chip Ganassi and Turner Scott literally pushed this kid to go straight into the Nationwide Series from the K&N Pro Series. This is the equivalent of pushing a high school baseball player to play in the Triple A's, one level below the MLB. And yeah, even though Quapple was a talented truck series driver, I still don't think that he should have been called up to the Cup Series without getting a little more Bush Series experience first. Overall, I'm glad that Travis Quapple got the opportunity to race in NASCAR's Top Series. Not a lot of people get that opportunity, so I'm extremely glad he did the best he could with what he was given. I'll always wonder what his career would have looked like had he gotten a shot with a better team or if the teams he had been with hadn't closed so soon. Nevertheless, because of the fact that he ran at the back of the pack for the most of his career, people may only remember this man because of his odd looking name. Well, there's that. And there's this. This morning, this stolen $300,000 race car found after an extraordinary heist hit one of America's biggest sports. A first in NASCAR's history, this custom stock car gone in seconds on Friday morning, leaving racing team Extreme and driver Travis Quapple no choice but to drop out of Sunday's Sprint Cup race. Thank y'all once again for watching. If you liked what you saw, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you have a suggestion on what I should do next, leave it in the comments below. All right, y'all. Peace.